Hi, I'm Matt. Let's talk about what a works cited page is and how it should be formatted in MLA. You've probably heard the terms works cited and bibliography used interchangeably, but they're actually two different things. Both are a list of sources that had some influence on your paper. However, a bibliography is a list of sources that relate to the content of your paper, whether they are quoted directly or are just some works that inspired your ideas. You can use bibliographies to suggest additional reading to your audience if they are interested in learning more about the subject you discuss in your paper. On the other hand, works cited pages list only the sources that you quoted or paraphrased in your paper. Everything listed in your works cited page will have a corresponding in-text citation somewhere in your paper that tells your reader that this section was written by somebody else. They'll then be able to go to your works cited page and find the full reference, which will allow them to find the quote in the original text. This is important for people who want to verify that you actually researched your topic and gives them an opportunity to trace how you came to your conclusions. Works cited pages should always be the last page or pages of your paper, and they should always start on a new page. The works cited page should have one inch margins around the entire document, and the entire text should be double spaced. The margins will probably already be set to one inch by default, but it's always a good idea to double check them when you are writing a formal paper. You can do this by checking the page settings in your word processing program. The works cited page should also have page numbers continuing from the end of your paper. So if your paper ends on page seven, your works cited page should start on page eight. In MLA, your whole paper will have what's called a running head. This shows up in the top right corner of every page of your paper, one half inch from the top edge and along the right one inch margin. It lists the writer's last name, followed by a space and the page number. Below this, use the title Work Cited if you only reference one source, and Works Cited if you reference more than one source. The title should be centered at the top of the page, just below the one inch top margin. Don't italicize the title, and use the same font style and size that you use for the rest of the paper, typically 12 point font. Finally, use an extra space between the title and the first citation on the page. The full list of your references should run along the left margin of the page and each entry should have a hanging indent. This means that each line after the first is indented a half inch. You can tell your word processor to do this automatically by changing the page settings. Again, make sure that all of the lines in your works cited page are double spaced. Organize the references in your works cited page alphabetically by the first item in the reference. So, if your references are two books in a film, you'll alphabetize the books by the last names of their respective authors, and you'll alphabetize the film by its title. It'll help in the long run to keep your work cited up to date as you research your paper. But don't worry about formatting everything until after you've finished your final draft, since you never know if you might end up not using a source during the revision process. I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you next time. I'm Matt. In this video, we will look at how to create an MLA citation for websites. To create an MLA citation for a website, you will need the following pieces of information. The author's first and last name, the title of the article or page, the title of the website, the name of the publisher if it differs from the name of the website, the date the page or site was published if it's available, and the URL. When including URLs in a citation, leave out the hypertext protocol prefix. While this used to be the case, you no longer need to include the date you access the website. If you still want to add this information, list it after the URL in the day, month, year format using the proper month abbreviation. For websites with one author, start with the author's name, last name first, then the first name separated with a comma. End this section with a period. The title of the web page or article is placed in quotation marks, with a period before the end of quotation. 
The title of the website is written in italics followed by a comma. If the name of the publisher differs from the name of the website, include it after the title. You will often find the website publisher at the bottom of the website or under the About Us section. Following the publisher is the date that the page or article was published or posted. Finally, end with the URL, permalink, or DOI. As with all bibliographic citations, use a hanging indent. The in-text citation for a website with an author is the author's last name in parentheses, followed by a period. Unless the website includes numbered paragraphs or sections, don't include any additional information. For the website used in the example before, the in-text citation would look like this, with McNary in parentheses after the last closing quotation mark, followed by a period. For a website with two authors, place the author's last name in the same order as the source. The first name should be formatted in reverse order as was done for a single author. The second name, however, is written as first name, last name, and is followed by a period. The rest of the citation will follow the same structure as citations for websites with one author. The in-text citation for a website with two authors should include both authors' last names, in the same order they are listed in the source and your work cited page. For a source with three or more authors, the first name is listed in reverse order and is followed by a comma and et al. Et al. is the abbreviation for et alia, a gender-neutral Latin phrase meaning and others. The in-text citation for a website with three or more authors should contain only the first author's last name, followed by et al. Sometimes websites do not state who wrote the information on the page. When no author is listed, you can omit the author information from the citation and begin with the title instead. The rest of the citation will follow in the same structure as before. Often, web pages are published by organizations or corporations with no author indicated. In these cases, you can assume that the publisher also authored the web page, as in this example. Since the author and publisher are the same in these cases, you can skip showing an author and just indicate the organization or corporation as the publisher. The in-text citation for a website without an author is noted with the first word or words in the title in italics and surrounded with parentheses, followed by a period. For the website we used as an example, the in-text citation would be written like this. As you can see, only the first part of the title is used. And there you have it. While there are a lot of details to keep track of, there's a consistent structure to help you keep track of what you need for each citation.